Welcome to Water Level. The story of the American Southwest's two largest reservoirs, Lake Mead and Lake Powell, continues to unfold in 2025, and the numbers now tell a sobering story. As of October 10th, Lake Mead's surface elevation sits at 1,057.77 feet above sea level. This marks a noticeable drop of nearly six feet from the same date one year ago. What's more concerning is that Mead remains roughly 162 feet below its full pool elevation of 1219.6 feet. By volume, the lake is currently holding only about 31.9% of its total storage capacity. This decline has rekindled worries among observers, who monitor the delicate balance between inflows, releases, and regional water demands. Over at Lake Powell, the situation paints a similar, and in some respects, even more troubling picture. Powell's current elevation is 3544.05 feet. That's down over 33 feet compared to one year ago. This means the lake is sitting approximately 156 feet below its full pool level of 3,700 feet. In terms of content, Powell holds just 27.6% of its total capacity, leaving vast stretches of its canyon walls exposed. The reservoir, which once stretched for miles at high elevations, now sits over 400 feet deep at the dam, a depth that still hides immense water yet far less than what was once normal. Looking back over the last 12 months, both graphs for Mead and Powell share a similar pattern. Lake Mead began the year slightly above 1,060 feet and saw modest gains through the early spring, peaking in February around 1,066 feet. But after that point, the steady rise reversed. By April, levels began to slide downward again continuing through summer. By the end of September, the reservoir had dropped nearly 9 feet from its peak, reaching the mid-1050s before showing a small rebound in early October. These minor upticks are not uncommon, but they do little to offset the overall downward slope of the year. Lake Powell's story unfolds with even greater volatility. Over the past year, Powell's level has steadily trended downward, starting near 3578 feet last October and losing altitude almost month by month. There was a brief period of stabilization around May and June, when releases and inflows nearly balanced, but the reprieve was short-lived. From July onward, the chart shows a sharp decline, the surface dipping below 3550 by late September. The slow pace of recovery since then highlights how difficult it has become for the system to regain even a few feet of elevation. Behind these numbers lies a complex network of inflows and releases that determine how much water each lake retains. For Lake Mead, the total inflow for the new water year 2026 has reached about 186,000 acre-feet so far while releases from Hoover Dam have totaled around 123,000 acre-feet. Despite the moderate inflows, the reservoir's storage has still fallen by more than 457,000 acre-feet since the beginning of the water year. This imbalance suggests that even small differences between what comes in and what goes out can have major cumulative impacts over time. Lake Powell shows an even more precarious dynamic. During the first 10 days of the water year, inflows have reached just under 119,000 acre-feet, while the Glen Canyon Dam has released about 158,000 acre-feet. The result is a net loss of over 38,000 acre-feet in storage in a matter of days. Even with inflows running slightly above last year's average, the lake continues to fall faster than it can recover. This imbalance, if sustained, places Powell in a difficult position heading into the winter months. When we compare both reservoirs side by side, the patterns become clear. Lake Mead, downstream, relies on the health of Lake Powell upstream to maintain its elevation. As Powell struggles to retain water, the flow into Mead is reduced,
leaving the lower reservoir with less support. The entire system acts like a chain of connected vessels, and when one drops, the other follows. Currently, the inflows feeding Lake Mead are running at about 84% of average, while Powell's inflows are just slightly higher than normal. But both remain insufficient to rebuild lost storage. The long-term implications of these falling levels are deeply concerning. At 1,057 feet, Lake Mead remains just 82 feet above the critical 975-foot threshold, a level that would severely impact water deliveries and power generation at Hoover Dam. The closer the surface gets to that limit, the more difficult it becomes to operate the dam efficiently. Similarly, Powell's current elevation of 3544 feet leaves it only about 154 feet above the minimum power pool, the level at which the turbines at Glen Canyon Dam can no longer function effectively. That buffer, once considered large, is shrinking faster than expected. Looking back over the last year, these charts show that the recent fluctuations are less a sign of recovery and more a reflection of small, short-lived adjustments in river flow. For Lake Mead, the small upward bump in early October represents minor inflow stabilization rather than a true rebound. Historically, such movements occur when upstream releases briefly exceed downstream demand, but without sustained inflow, the lake's overall slope continues downward. For Powell, the line has flattened but not risen, indicating that while losses may have slowed, they haven't reversed. The visual record of these charts is striking. At Lake Mead, the difference between last October's elevation and today's is almost six feet, a decline that represents billions of gallons of lost water. The lake's once broad bays now appear narrower and shallower. At Powell, the loss of more than 33 feet in a single year is staggering, exposing even more of the sandstone walls that have been hidden underwater for decades. Each foot of decline represents a massive amount of water, roughly 65,000 acre-feet, meaning that Powell's year-over-year -year loss exceeds 2 million acre-feet. What's also notable is the relative stability of inflows when compared to storage change. In other words, while some water is still arriving, the lake's ability to hold on to it is diminishing. Part of that results from management decisions, releases for downstream users, and the constant balance between hydropower needs and supply commitments. But whatever the cause, the numerical outcome remains the same. Both reservoirs continue to decline at rates that underscore the fragility of their recovery. Observers are also watching how these levels impact the broader system performance. At Mead, the current 31.9% capacity means the lake is operating with less than one-third of its designed storage. This reduced cushion limits flexibility in water management and increases the risk of shortage conditions. Powell, at just 27.6% capacity, faces similar constraints, with every additional drop adding strain to an already stretched system. Even though both dams continue generating electricity, the efficiency and stability of that generation depend directly on water elevation. One critical detail that often goes unnoticed is how interconnected the two lakes truly are. Lake Powell, managed by the Bureau of Reclamation's Upper Basin Operations, directly influences the amount of water sent downstream to Mead through Glen Canyon Dam releases. When Powell drops too low, its ability to meet those obligations weakens. The result is a cascading effect that impacts both reservoirs, a balance that becomes harder to maintain when inflows lag behind releases for extended periods. Looking back over the last year, 2024 briefly gave hope of improvement, as both lakes saw temporary rises during the early spring months. But as the new water year 2026 begins, that optimism is fading. The data now shows that despite occasional gains, both systems remain far below safe or stable levels.
With inflows to Meade currently running at just under 100% of last year's pace, and Powell's at around 108%, the question becomes how long they can sustain even these reduced figures before further declines occur. The latest report also shows that the combined storage of the two reservoirs is now below 30% of total system capacity. That statistic is alarming for a region that relies on these two lakes for municipal supply, irrigation, and power. The water elevation graphs, with their gentle downward arcs, tell a quiet but powerful story of gradual depletion. The danger is not an abrupt collapse but a slow, persistent erosion of reserve capacity.